I'm Professor Arthur Benjamin. I teach mathematics at Harvey Mudd College in Claremont, California. Today, I'm at the Carriage House of the Mathematical Association of America, and I'm going to teach you how to square numbers in your head faster than a calculator. Now with me today are my assistants, Mari and Catherine, and Catherine's going to call out some numbers for me to square. Mari is going to verify them on the calculator. Now first let me tell you what the square of a number is. If you want to square a number like 5, that means taking 5 times itself, which gives you 25. Now the way you do that, do that on the calculator is you, in one of two ways. On most calculators, you could hit 5, then times, then equals, and that will give you the square. Or if you have a fancier calculator like this one, you could press a number, let's say like 6, and hit this x squared button and that'll give you 36 by only having to press the button once. So what I'm going to try and do now is to square some numbers in my head faster than Mari can do on her calculator, even using the shortcut method. OK, so Catherine, get us warmed up. Give us a two-digit number to square. 73. 73 squared is 5,329. Correct. Correct. How about another two-digit number? 51. 51 is 2,601. Correct. How about a three-digit number this time? 256. 256 is 65,536. Good. One more three-digit number for the fun of it. 762. 762 squared, that's a harder one, is 580,644. Correct. Good. Would you like to know how that's done? Let me show you. OK, so uh, let's start with a, 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 give us a small example as our first, our first number. 25. Oh, you know what? If it ends in 5, that's almost too easy. I'll get to that in a minute, but give me a, let's, let's say 23 instead, okay? That's a good first example. Now, to square the number 23, uh, I will either go, I go up or down to the nearest easy number. In the case of 23, that nearest easy number is 20. So I'm going to go down 3 to 20. Now, whatever comes up must come down, or whatever comes down must go up. If I go down 3 to 20, I balance it by going up 3 to 26. So the first part of my calculation of 23 squared is, do, is I do 26 times 20. Now, that's the same as 26 times 2 with a friendly 0 attached. Let's do that one in our heads. Now, if I do 2 times 26, and we do it left to right, right? 2 times 20 is 40. 2 times 6 is 12. 40 plus 12 from left to right is 52. So 20 times 26 is 520. Almost done. All we have to add to this is the square of the number that we went up and down. We went up and down 3. 3 squared is 9. And that's your answer, 529. Pretty easy, right? Here, let's try another example. Let's say the, the number you asked me earlier, 51. Let's square the number 51, OK? So this time, the nearest easy number would be 50. So I'm going to go down 1 to 50 up 1 to 52. Now let's do 52 times 50. Now there are two ways we can do this problem. One is we do 5 times 52 and attach a 0. Let me show you that way first. So 5 times 50 is 250. 5 times 2 is 10. 250 plus 10 is 260. Attach the friendly 0 to get 2,600. Almost done. All we have to add to that is the square of 1, which is 1, giving us 2,601. By the way, there was another way we could have done the 50 times 52 problem. We could take advantage of the fact that 50 is half of 100. Right? And so if I do 50 times 52, I can take half of 52, which is 26, then multiply that by 100 to get 2,600. Either way, we re redu reduce to 2,600 plus 1, which is 2,601. Here, let's do another example. Let's try the square of 97 this time. All right, 97. This is an example where we're going to go up instead of down, because the nearest easy number here would be 100. 
So I'll go up 3 to 100, down 3 to 94. Now you tell me, 94 times 100 is 9400. Almost done. All we have to add is the square of 3, not the square of 7, by the way. We only traveled 3 to get up to 100. 3 squared is 9, and that's your answer, 9,409. Now, I mentioned earlier that we would do problems that ended in 5. So let me show you. If, if any of this was confusing to you, if you, got, if you got a little bit lost, here's something that you might, might find even easier to do. If the number ends in 5, like let's say 25 squared, then you can go up 5 or down 5. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same multiplication. If you go down 5 to 20, you then have to go up 5 to 30. 20 times 30 is, that's easy, that's 2 times 3 with two zeros attached, is 600. Add to that the square of 5, which is 25. 600 plus 25 is 625. And that's the answer. By the way, there's an, another way of doing these problems that end in 5 that you might find even easier still. If you square a number that ends in 5, there's only two things you need to know. First of all, the answer will always, always end in 25, just like here. Also, how does the answer begin? It begins by taking the first digit, which is 2, multiplying that by the next higher digit, which is 3. 2 times 3 is 6, and that's your answer, 625. All right, let's try another example. Let's say, um, let's say the problem was 35 squared. Okay, so again, 35 squared is going to end with 25, not 35, 25. How does it begin? It begins by taking the first digit, 3, times the next higher digit, 4. 3 times 4 is 12, and there's your answer, 1225. Okay, you do this one, okay? You tell me, how about squaring 75? Okay, think about it, think of it. All right, let's just give me the answer. How do, how do we do this? 7 times 8 is 56, so the answer is 56.25. Let me show you why this works. Okay, I mean, here we are at the Mathematical Association of America, and we want to see reasons. Why does the mathematics, why, does the, why do these shortcuts work the way they do? Here's the algebra that, I, that justifies the method that you've seen here. I don't think about this algebra as I'm doing the calculation, but it tells me that it's always going to work. Here's the formula. a squared equals a plus d times a minus d plus d squared, okay? Um, first of all, let me show you that this is a true equation, right? If you take a plus d times a minus d, if you've had an algebra course, you know that's equal to a squared minus d squared. When you add the d squared, the d's go away, they disappear, and you're just left with a squared, which is what we have here. Now, this is exactly what we were doing when we were squaring these numbers. Let's say, for instance, when we squared 97, 97 squared, what was our d? What, what was the distance we traveled? We traveled 3. And this formula says that 97 squared is equal to 97 plus 3 times 97 minus 3 plus 3 squared. That is, it's 100 times 94 plus 9, and that's exactly what we did here, okay? By the way, this will also work for, this formula shows that it'll also work for three-digit numbers and higher. Let's say, um, give, give us a, a three-digit number and I'll square it and show you how it works. How about a three-digit number this time? 762 squared is 580,644. Good. Let me show you how that works. Okay, so, so to square a number like 762, here's what we do. Now, 762 is not a bad number um, to multiply, but let's move it up to 
800. So I'm going to go up 38 to 800, down 38, actually I double 762, to get 724. I do 800 times 724, let's see, 8 times 700 is 5600, 8 times 24 is 192, 5600 plus 192 is 5792, it's 5792, so that's 579,200. Add to that the square of 38, and since I've been doing these for a very long time, I know 38 squared is 1,444. Add those together from left to right to get 580,644. And that's exactly what I was doing in my head when I was solving that problem. By the way, um, the, another reason I work my calculations from left to right is because it allows you to say your answer while you're still calculating, thereby giving the illusion that you're doing the problem even faster. Here, let me wrap things up by doing one more calculation for you. Give us a four-digit number this time. I'm not going to write it down on the board. I'm just going to do it in my head. I'll think out loud so you can hear what's going on. But this is just for your amusement. How about a four-digit number? 4,913. 4,913. OK, so I double that to get 5 times 4,826. That's 24 million. Hold on to the 130,000. Turn that into dimes. Add to that the square of 87, which is 7,569. So I get 137,569. Correct. Good. Thank you very much.